Is there a difference of what that is, or no, is just it adding another layer? Adding another layer. So, okay, cool. <clears throat> this is Celeste on the air. <laughs> okay, so come closer, please. Uh, bring your uh, dick around if you want. This is how you do it. So, right now I'm here sitting here with Celeste. She's going to introduce her podcast. And uh, why don't you tell me about the, how this inspiration came to you? By not having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity sparks when you have a lot of time on your hands and when you have a lot of time to think uh, by yourself in your room, I believe uh, ideas come into mind and you want to, or at least I have this strong, uh, compelling uh, energy that drives me to share this and, and help other people and, and you know just kind of educate on a, on a bigger picture that I have in mind and also share these crazy personal experiences that I personally think the whole world does not get to see and does not get to ever hear about and it's crazy interesting and it's crazy cool so like I feel like I I want to share it like you know so when you're moving around make sure you keep the microphone close to you and then um, but also if you're in control of the show then you're gonna have to if you were doing it like this you'd control the mic as well so I'd be like don't gr okay, talk. You're in control. I'm in control. No, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm just giving you advice for the situation. Like, if you're interviewing somebody, okay. you should be, and you have only one mic, you should be in control of the mic. I, I, when I would plan to interview someone, I would want to have two mics. You know, I'd be more respectable. You know, to have that yeah. uh, luxury for them. Uh, they're my guests, and I would want my guests to feel real comfortable, especially when, as someone who's personally started the workforce in hospitality and retail like my whole thing was be nice you know you know the get the guest always comes first or the customer always comes first so like they would want to be feel good you know I would like to, I like to make people feel good I like to make people smile I like to make people you know feel something whether it's I don't personally like angry, sad, or nothing, none of those sorts, but I make them feel those ways too sometimes. I mean, we, we're only as humans, and our emotions is what makes us feel alive. So why the medium of podcasting? Like, why do you think that you wanted to convey this rather than writing or blogs or that type of thing? Like, what about podcasting kind of made you feel like that would be something you'd want to do? So podcasting is something I would want to do because I believe, like, I think I would have mm, more... Like my schedule would wrap around more around this kind of stuff. More the more that I take my time to go to school and to work a full time job because that is necessary for my circumstances. I have to work. I have to get an education. So I don't have that much time on my hands um, to draw, to take the time to uh, write. Uh, I cannot write anymore. My handwriting is very shitty. <laughs> So if you saw, you'd be like, no. Um, uh, definitely, I would think I would like to. I'd like to communicate more with communi like vocally because I don't. I would like to communicate more vocally because I don't think uh, texting and uh, uh, reading, you know, it does cause an impact. You get to see a story, you get a picture, a vision in your mind, but you also see the same kind of thing you know when you're listening to something like I would listen to podcasts while I'm driving and I would listen to podcasts while I'm doing stuff in my room or, or like move, cleaning whatever like I can listen and do something else at the same time now multitasking isn't always a good thing but in this in the in my circumstances in my situations I would love to listen to uh, someone else and I would like to get educated on something and I would like to teach people I would like to share stories that I think people would want to hear and vlogging takes time it like the video you have to look good you have to set a set a whole background and and uh, setting for the whole picture or art you want to create and I think this is just another form of art that I could express vocally and uh, I think it would work more well for my adapted uh, current lifestyle I know it's gonna change everything changes humans you know change so, so eventually you do want to do video because I've seen you do video before but um, but you're thinking the audio medium is going to be a little bit better. Yes, yes. In my current circumstances, I believe definitely audio because like I don't have the the right setting just yet. 
but I do want to move to video. I do want to go switch to Twitch and and live stream there with video. I want to play video games too. I've never. Did you know I've never had PS4, nothing or like a game console, none of that. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had it was a. Uh, I won't get into that because it was old school stuff. I was, uh, but I had the PlayStation, the original one. So. Uh, who are your inspirations in terms of audio? Like you said, you certain people that you kind of admire in the audio field. You mentioned in Twitch. Um, what uh, what podcasts do you personally listen to, and what about them kind of draws you to them? So, one of my first podcasts would probably be oh gosh. I can't even remember the first first ones, but one of the ones I generally kind of listen to right now, currently, which I like to listen to, are uh, This is Mythical Morning uh, with Rhett and Link. Rhett and Link, yeah. They are, you know, two old guys. They, they're, well, they're not that old, but they're, they're real, like, charismatic. They're unique. They, they bring, uh, they had this artistic creative vision and they took it and they ran with it and i think they they are pretty they're freaking inspirational they have another one called ear biscuits have you heard that yeah, one that's, that's the one i'm talking about ear, ear biscuits yeah this mythical morning yeah well I don't they know. run that one too okay so i didn't know what the podcast was called so i called i just okay. i just went with the with what i know them as yeah. which is good mythical morning but definitely yeah I, Ear Biscuits, Ear Biscuits uh, is Red and Link, and they interview um, generally people they know, but usually YouTube celebrities or relatively famous people. In it. Paleontologists. Oh, they did. Oh, they did more of that. So that's pretty cool. But um, it was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so Red and Link, uh, Ear Biscuits, um, and this like an interview style as well. What else? What other ones? You mentioned a couple others. So I mentioned uh, Twitch. I H three H three pod or H three podcast. Uh, also airs on Twitch. Uh, they do video, and I think they're. F <laughs> <laughs> I think they're dope. So I, I, um, I, they got they get Post Malone on there. They get um, they uh, they also get they're actually generalized more around uh, younger YouTube celebrities uh, besides uh, Ear Biscuits and Rent and Link. They they get they go um, more of a more of an older platform uh, that they give and. Um, what and do they talk about? Uh, what do they talk about that you particularly gravitate towards? Is it like because they interview people? What it, what you know? What is it? So the point? What they what they gravitate towards is kind of just knowing more. Like I think uh, that's amazing because they 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 the they kind of just talk about stuff that they they generally know themselves and they have their personal experiences, but they also talk about like uh, they want to get insight on from another pers another's perspective on like what they want to hear or not not the, not generally what they want to hear but i don't know that's a trick question but we'll come back to that but i was talking about h3 podcast they they have something interesting i want to hear because they're under the influence like they would have a drink they would be surrounded by four or five people on air so they've got four or five mics around them and they've got like five people uh, one of them is sitting, eating on the couch. So that's not where the video comes in. You can see the physical, like funny goofiness that comes around, that comes along in the background of, have, of how a, a pad podcast is going on with multiple people. And I think that's hella fun. And I want to eventually get to that point. But for now, you know, it's just me and you, Alan. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll take it that way. But um, okay. Well, those are cool ones. And you also mentioned uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, have I do listen. I mean, I listen to the ones you mentioned. I miss Air Biscuits and the other one, but uh, Joe Rogan's one I, I listen to more regularly. And uh, and now Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan. Like he's a guy, a famous guy who just brings guests on the show and he just chat about random stuff for like three hours, right? So, but I can see, you know, the, the, that's an interesting format. But I don't know if it works for everybody. But it, you do listen to them. Yeah, listen to I love Joe Rogan's format. I love the way he. Uh, I love his podcast too. Honestly, I think it's one of my most listened to right now at the moment as well. Um, probably not as uh, as long as you have been doing, but I have just kind of like stumbled upon his YouTube not that long ago, and and the way I listen to him, it's like oh my god, it's like my mirror. Like I'm looking at a reflection because I know the curiosity, that deep thinking, that that motivation, and that mindset. Like that's me. Like or or that's similarities or characteristics that I carry in myself as well along with way more and and like in a way various different ways like I I want to be you know like
one of those superhumans like that. Like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to help this. I want to participate in that. I want to be hosting this. And it's just incredible the way so the way he's accomplished so much. So like, uh, the way when I listen to his podcast, I feel very compelled to keep listening. And uh, I'm no Joe Rogan, but I think I could make as well of an impact as he has and he's a really he's one of those uh podcasts that maybe i didn't mention because i'm just so i've just got the biggest crush on him so <laughs> yeah i'm sure a lot of girls do um but so all right so you got joe rogan you got you got the people that you really wanted to be but what is it um that you want to convey in your podcast that you feel is going to bring something unique because you have a very uh, unique perspective on the uh, the world or you, are you, are you, is you kind of talk about your lifestyle but you also want to interview people because you were talking to me earlier before we started recording um, that you would like you would for example would interview the garbage man and the garbage man might have something different to say or interesting to say so you're are you just getting perspectives from different people Oh yeah, definitely. Like you know, like uh, that was one of one of, one of my inspirations from uh, maybe um, all 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 types of things that I follow that have interviews like Good Myth, uh, Ear Biscuits. They they interview people. H three H H three podcast. They also interview people. Joe Rogan interviews people. Like um, it's part of this urge that I have that I've always uh, uh, have had a wanderlust for adventure, for knowledge, and. It comes with uh, my career, or in my, one of my uh, s- educations that I want to have, and it's journalism, and I want to just learn about uh, people and their lives and how they they would want to, or how, th- not they would want to, but like how they live their lives. I'm, I'm curious, I want to know, I'm a nosy motherfucker, like I, I, like not too nosy to where I want to get involved. Just nosy, like, hey, what's up with your life? Oh, cool. Yeah, I like to hear that. Like, I'm intrigued. I'm interested because our our mind is like so much is capable of so much more. And I think that the current you know uh, circumstances they they prevent us from expanding that. They prevent us from from giving us the the capacity to stretch our minds and to think more I mean I'm bored with what I have I know for sure I don't I don't really socialize too much but um, I know I'm going to change that I, mean, I know I'm going or like I'll have phases I'm aware I'm in and out you know all the time there's a balance like I'll be socialized socializing between years and these years and these years and then they all have moments where I won't socialize at all and it's like that's pretty that's normal it's like you know it's just a balance but I do believe that um, yeah <laughs> what was I saying <laughs> I think I was oh no you asked me about interviews what makes me want to interview people yeah like the garbage man okay per se you get the garbage man and he he's taking literally your shit out like you think about it like you, who would want to work in a job like that where they would pick up your shit like no one wants to do that i don't want to do that when i go to the trash can and i dump my shit in there i throw it because i do not want to be five feet near that thing like it's so disgusting to me at least because i know from my brain expansion from when in my youth when they teach me about bacteria and and sanitation and hygiene you have to be clean so that you can be well so you can have health and you can be alive and able right basically you want to figure out what makes this person tick yeah like what made this person stay or keep a career as a garbage man or does he like what he do or does he not like what he do does he feel like he has no choice is there a way that he copes with it like you know it's trash i mean if you like trash who who do you know that likes trash uh i don't know garbage man i guess but all right well so that's interesting. So basically, you know, you're basically trying to figure out what his psychology is, and what prompted him to do that career, and then uh, what he goes through on a daily basis. I mean, something that I mean, garbage men get paid pretty well. So if you can deal with the garbage part, then you get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I want to know if he kept his job for the money, or um, it's just like. I don't. Think anyone, I don't think anyone does it because they love garbage. Accurate, could be. I don't think they would do. They would keep it for garbage as well. Why do I have so many pauses? I'm so sorry. This is my first time. Ah. 
it's good because you're gonna get used to eventually you'll get used to talking a different way and you don't like you're gonna get to the stage of, of pausing and, and saying uh, a lot and all that other stuff and that's why it's good to kind of go through this exercise because the bottom line is like it's really hard to carry a conversation and especially when you have a like no you, you, what I would do is keep notes about what you want to talk about and what I need you to do is open up your notebook and, and it is open there was a uh, there was a thing that you had talked about with me earlier. Um, and I forgot what it was. Uh, what, 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 the last time we met, what was that thing that something reflect? Uh, I can't remember the name of that. Something. It was something began with an R or something. I don't want to say. Oh, are you talking about kinesthetic awareness? Kinesthetic awareness. I need you to talk a little bit about that because that's something that I am super interested in, and I don't know exactly what it is. So can you explain it? Can you explain to me what kinesthetic awareness is? So, so kinesthetic awareness. Like I don't know much about it either but i know it's there and i know it's uh it's possible and it's capable it's like it's also um another way of saying uh body consciousness or maybe and what i heard you know and this is what rooting from an idea an idea that i have stemmed from one of joe's rogan's podcasts as well um that uh it wasn't joe rogan talking it was one of his guests uh that that peripheral vision peripheral vision Okay, and that's uh, it's something that's kind of a phenomenon that you don't really l- hear or uh, think about, um, and like it's it's a pheno- it's it's one of those like phenomenons you don't you can't it's it's hard to explain. It's one of like uh, and uh, Joe Rogan's guess. I think I remember him saying something about you. You look at the corners of the eye of your eyes. You try to look at the whole image of what you have in front of your pupils instead of just what you're focusing on with your with what you want to in your eyes and your mind right mm-hmm. so but that's peripheral vision what's kinesthetic awareness okay peripheral vision kind of like begins uh, at least for me and my personal experience I don't know I'm an empath so like it's really hard to explain what um, how that leads to that but I I will do my uh, best to explain to my to my abilities like you would have peripheral vision as in um, you could see instead of seeing just like these two laptops sitting in front of me on the coffee table with these two cups, I can also see this cup and I can see the gentleman walking down the hall and the and the end of the corner of the booth over there. Correct. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so um, with that, I think I don't know something in my mind kind of ticks and I just lead that into my body and I am fully uh, ready to to. Um, move every inch of my body like I kind of think focus or think about I don't know it's such a hard thing to explain into words and it's like such a trick question (laughs) I didn't want to talk about it right now in the first podcast because I still don't know how the hell to explain it well that's good you know what you should do is like um, look up the actual definition of it and just explain that like just and then kind of go and then talk about what your version of that is so like when you're when you're coming to a you're doing a show You'll do research before you do it, right? You're gonna you have notes about what you're gonna talk about, and that's just you know the you know maybe just a few uh, bullet points of things that you want to cover during the show. Then the rest of it will be natural. It will be a, a basically a, uh, a a discussion point that you'll have each time and talking to people, and then you'll come prepared with certain notes to be able to cover it. Because correct, I didn't think you would ask me that. Though. Right. That's what you got to be prepared for. Someone's going to might throw you off with a question or some statement that they make that you're going to have to kind of you know, improvise on. Right. Correct. Correct. So, uh, well, I do have a, a general definition. It's like basically aware of every inch of your body. Like if you want to move your pinky or your ring finger or the or your pinky toe or your big toe, you have full capacity and full control and capability of moving that. A part of your body or you have that 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 um that that power to move like your right hand and your left hand at the same time doing the same exact thing because you controlled it and you demanded it to happen or you demanded your body to do that and your body is you know pretty smart as to as to what the human and the brain wants and needs to survive so i believe the hu- the body and the mind are are one and you should, you know, that's why they say, you know, listen to your gut feeling too. Like, you know, because your body knows better than than what logically people would want to put into your mind. It, you know, which is another thing that I don't want to get into right now. So it's, uh, what I'm reading is that it's actually called muscle memory. Isn't it? The awareness of our own movement. 
when we walk, eat, write, or brush our teeth. The kinesthetic sense is based on pro. I don't know how to read that word. Uh, uh, which is awareness. awareness uh, pro prea. Okay, the kin the kinesthetic sense is based on the pro preception. Which is awareness of our position of our joints. Exactly. So you have awareness of all each of your fingers. Like per se, let's say I'm not right-handed. Okay, I'm left. I'm not. I mean, I'm not left-handed. I'm right-handed. But there's been moments where I've got to use my left hand and my right hand at the same time, especially when I've worked at a factory. I work at a factory right now, and I've, I've literally adapted mus my muscles in my left hand uh, so well, and I'm basically left-handed in everything I do besides writing because I have trained my left hand to do it, and my right hand is actually getting weaker right now. I'm, all, I'm almost to the point where I've got to go to dumbbells in the gym, but I'm not going to dumbbells. I want to stick to barbell. But I want to even it out, you know, when I'm trying to do that je that chest press. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, definitely. You got to um, – it's, it's, it's just awareness of what your mus your body is and where you have it. Like you want to move your left leg, your right leg. You want to make this stronger. You're, 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 you're aware of your dominant – your dominant side, like your dominant left leg. Okay, I'm gonna move my right leg right now. Like it's it's it's, it's something that that I want to kinesthetic awareness. It's something that I want to share in this story too. That I've that I've uh, personally experienced when I worked at the factory. Yeah. Is yeah. You jumped me, jumped the gun on this one, but I think I gotta post this up now because I'm talking about it. That's good. No, I like it, and I like the fact that you uh, that you're able to. To, to improvise and, and step into the, the role of uh, explaining something that maybe you were thrown off by. And that's what sometimes happens with guests. Like sometimes a guest will throw a question at you or they say something they say something a little bit unusual and you're like, all right, well, that's interesting. Maybe we should go down this direction. And then you have to kind of kind of go down a different thing because it might be off your notes. I know when I've done podcasts previously is that I've had these notes and things in front of me, but half the time – it doesn't always go that way. Like it's just, it's more like oh, that's just my bullet points when I need to go perfect show. But no show is perfect. You're always gonna have moments of thoughts and improvise. You are always going to have a show here with Celeste on the air. <laughs> is that the new name, Celeste on the air? <laughs> so think you figured it out. I could, I could, I'm, I'm always gonna change it because I feel like I'm going to go with the flow with what's gonna vibe with me. It's gonna change. It's always changing. We we as humans are always changing. So, so um, a little bit. Uh, we we'll, won't we'll make this too much longer. But like basically, I want to get a little bit of background on like, where were you? Where did you grow up? And, and you mentioned a factory. So like you you mentioned like protein bars or something. So like so explain to me a little bit about your, your upbringing and like where where were you born? Where did you grow up? And and then um, how did you get to this stage right now? In really really short period of time. So write this down, please, while I talk. Um, so where I was born, I was born here in San Diego, California. I was uh, um, in Chula Vista, California specifically. And um, I was born uh, six pounds, seven ounces, uh, 102 a.m. or something, 104 a.m. But uh, I was born, okay, whatever. <laughs> I can give you. Uh, my mom shitted on me too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is fact. Anyways, um, I was born into a, a Mexican family that came from my mother's side, and uh, my uh, mom and dad were obviously not together. I didn't come from a normal what you, what society or the masses say normal a family. But you know who's not dysfunctional these days? That could, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I grew up with just my mom's family, and I was uh, I was raised to to kind of see my dad in a perspective that he wasn't there, that he was he was not going to support me, and that's fine. That you we don't need my dad in my life, you know, as most people would uh, conclude or or get around to coping with. Uh, but I lost. Or I grew up in a setting where, you know, I wasn't necessarily like the main child. I wasn't cared for the same way as my cousins and my aunts were. Um, like per se, they would have all these name brand clothes. They would, they would, um, 
ha- be able to do this and be able to go to that. I never went to prom. I never went to grad night. I never had nice clothes. I always wore hand-me-downs. Like, I grew up in a very poor setting because my family did not allow me to have good things or or they didn't care about me having good things, you know? It's just like, and I, this, this is something that I cannot talk to them about or I can't call them out on because they don't, they make me feel guilty about it or they make me feel like it's my fault. Like, how the fuck are you gonna feel, to tell me that it's my fault for living? So after eight years of my dad's disappearance, I went and I found him again. I, I seeked him out when I was now, what, 22 years old. And I seeked him out all over Facebook. And you know, it's a, such a crazy freaking story, dude, that I... I w- show. Save it for another show. Just, uh, I think this is like a good lead into something else. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to say, it's, I'm not going to say a big thing on it. It's just, it's just like, I've searched for my dad before. I've searched him on Facebook, like, many times. And now that I'm 22, now that I search the same name, the same thing, he pops up. I finally found him. Like such a crazy I've typed his name the same exact way before and it never popped up until now it's so crazy and it was actually kind of a what they call serendipity because like basically it was like a really good almost an enlightened moment for you when you actually got in touch with him because it reconnected you to something before like I mean we had a really cool conversation about this uh, a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago where um, you got reconnected with your dad and um, it changed your perspective on things, being able to have that side of you open up. And he, he seemed like a cool guy <laughs> on, on that level, but like at least uh, on trying to give you advice or trying to be there and understand who you are. And you started kind of piecing together where you came from and what the other part of you that maybe your one side of the family doesn't have, that side of your family, your father's side, has. And then you start kind of going, oh, you know what? That's why I'm this way. I have this kind of interesting thought patterns or this empathy that I've developed over time that are this kind of awareness of people around me or whatever, hypersensitivity to emotions. Um, That came from your dad because your dad's very much, uh, at least in what you've described, uh, somebody who can really kind of um, really get in touch with somebody's feelings. Is that the truth? Is that truth? I believe it's my truth. It's one of my truths. I mean, uh, my dad did enlighten me back again. It's kind of a remembrance of who I was and or what I uh, stood for before all of the struggles and all of the sadness and the anger and the depression that came swallowing my life away. Like, it just consumed me so much to the point where I was blind. And, I, you know, it literally, I was blind. Like, I didn't even wear my glasses back then. But now I... I and now I made it a point, you know, to get my glasses and I could see clearer and I could see a new perspective that I forgot. And I, I don't want to let it go. I'm not going to let it go because I know that there's more for me out there. And I know there's a reason for people being so angry. I mean, there's a reason for people treating me this way. And there's a reason for my mother's family to be acting this way towards me when I just I'm just want to help I just want to participate I just want to belong I just want to be happy with you guys but I can't I cannot provide what they provide with what they have already like they are not including me because I am not a part of them I am not of this family and you know out of much conversation with my dad you know it's just you find out and your perspective changes especially when you wake up and you find out that you've been living your life as a lie right yeah and i think that's an important thing to keep in mind that a lot of people might be going through something similar i mean i had a very similar upbringing as you and and um you know when you don't know one half of yourself you feel a bit lost and i think that might be kind of a tying running theme to the show is that the people that are lost come and understand where they're coming from and so I think that's, a, you know, by introspection, by reconnecting, by um, learning and, and keep pushing forward. So I think that's a good uh, kind of a, a base for developing a show like this. Definitely, definitely. Like being lost is something that it hurts. It's, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're confused. You don't know what's going on. Uh, um, you don't know where to go. And I'm, st- I'm still kind of sort of at that point, but I kind of had now I've been blessed. I've been lucky. I've been given the opportunity to talk to my other half and get that closure and i know a lot of people a lot of humans out there they don't get that closure and they don't and i personally can't say like i don't know what to tell you like i'm not an expert on this stuff but i know 
that there is a solution for you as well as well as there has been a solution for me so like don't give up like that kind of stuff you just keep going you keep treading dude but um but yeah like it's it's really life-changing when you you know you know i've you know, i've been raised by my mother's family um, I've been had I've been having to work since I was 18 years old since 19 years old I've always had to have a job and always had to bring in money for my grandmother for my family And I realized like, you know, who's out here supporting me? Like who's helping me save my money so that I can go to school? I can go to college. I can be independent I can be free to live my own life and start my own business start my own family like I don't know why I don't have that support and I kind of you know I I've opened my eyes to realize that it's okay. I don't these people don't want to support me. They don't, like, have, I don't know, like, the after time you see all the little details and you pay. Now that I see this, uh, my life in a, d in a very new and, and growing perspective and maturing perspective as well, I see that when, you know, these certain little details add up af over time and you can tell, at least for me, because as I said before, I'm an empath, I can see and I can feel what's really going on. Yeah, and I, I, as one too, I could feel the same thing. So, um, no, that's interesting. I, I think um, would it be a good idea to now to kind of wrap it up, figure out what it is that you want to leave people with, and then um, you maybe a call to action about you know where they can get you, you know, what the name of the show is, which may come later. Obviously, we we don't know exactly what it is. It's just a test run. But uh, but basically, why don't you just wrap it up and tell people where they can get Celeste on the air, iTunes, Twitter, uh, well, no Twitter, no iTunes, Stitcher. And um, no, wait, the, right now it's going to be only YouTube. <laughs> oh, you're gonna put it on YouTube? It's YouTube for now. I mean, I don't have any other outlet. I'm tr I'm re I'm truly trying to study and put more research into this. But this is just my pilot. This is not on. This is not Celeste on the A. <laughs> <laughs> not just that yet. might have to be the intro and outro. <laughs> I might have to put that in a song or something. Like Celeste on the A. No, yeah, I actually have a couple things songs I'm gonna I'm gonna show you.